Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to make trees look realistic. Now this took me a long time to master, and I'm still far from mastering it, but I always had a really hard time with trees until I understood this one simple fact about trees. So today we're going to be talking about a little bit of the science of what makes trees look real, and what will make your trees not look real if you do this one simple thing wrong. So today, we're going to be talking about how to make trees look realistic. Here we go. If you hear some thundering, that's because it's actually thundering outside. That's not a sound effects that I decided to randomly put in my video. It's actually storming outside, so... There's not really much you can do about that. So, first things first. When drawing a tree, it is important to understand what makes a tree look realistic. In order for us to do that, we're going to have to go back to kind of the science and observe in nature what trees do and the one law that they do follow because we know anything in nature isn't ever exactly the same, but they do follow rules. In order for us to st understand this rule, it's really kind of a common sense thing, but most people wouldn't have any use for understanding this, and sometimes it's hard to put the two and two together when you're drawing. Most people uh, learn this at some point, but to me, I like sharing what I've learned because I've personally had a hard time actually making trees look real, and it took me a long time to understand why all of my trees look like cartoons. Then it dawned on me that there is one thing in all trees that looks and is always the same, and that is when a tree starts growing, it starts out in a little trunk and then it grows into a couple little leaves, and then it grows into more leaves, and then it grows and grows and gets bigger and taller. Now, the trunk doesn't move, except it gets bigger. And there's one obvious reason for that, and that's because when you have a big tree, you gotta have a big trunk to support all that weight. So, the one thing that is always the same with trees is that at the bottom of the tree is always going to be the biggest trunk and the biggest size of the tree. And as it goes up, it gets smaller, in every direction. Now, allow me to illustrate. Let's say I have a tree, and here is my tree. Now this, of course, is just a sketch, and it's just to kind of show you guys what I'm talking about. This is our trunk. As the bottom of the tree is bigger than the trunk, obviously, it grows out. This point right here is biggest. Now, one of the main mistakes that I made when I was drawing trees is I did not understand that when you have a trunk of the tree that's this big around, you cannot have a branch coming off of that tree that is bigger than the diameter of the trunk. It will never be bigger here than it is here because this is where the tree started growing first. So the trunk was formed first and then the branches. So therefore it's got a head start on the branches and it's always gonna be bigger. Now, the reason why that's important is if you do a trunk this size and then you do the branch coming off of it this size, it's going to look wrong. And some people won't understand why it looks wrong. They'll just understand it's wrong and they'll just discount you as an artist, which is very annoying. And also, when you have a branch that you are coming away from the tree from, it's never going to do this. It's never going to get bigger the further away it goes, and that goes for the trunk. This point of the tree is always going to be the biggest in diameter and the biggest in size. As it goes up, it always gets smaller. And that same thing goes with all of your branches. So if you have a branch that's coming off here, you're going to have the branch come off, and it's going to go in random directions, and you can make it go in any different direction you want. As it comes off, the fundamental rule that will never change in almost every single situation is that it always gets smaller as it goes away little twigs, they're going to be smaller and less in diameter, and as you get out to the little teeny tiny little branches, they're going to get smaller as they go away. 
you're never going to have a branch that comes off of a trunk that one gets bigger as it goes further away and is bigger than the trunk itself like this is going to be weird it's going to look strange now the, and that can be the only problem the trunk and the branch that comes off of here is just too big it might have the right shape it might have the right randomness as far as the branches coming off of it it may do everything right except the fact that you've got this random big branch that comes off of here and looks strange now of course the way to fix that is to enlarge the branch that's coming off of the tree now if you wanted to do this and add a branch onto there then that's exactly what you're going to need to do. That is the fundamental rule that you're always going to want to follow. Keep this in mind. When drawing a tree, as the tree goes up, it is always going to get smaller. Now, there are going to be certain situations where, like this, you have a tree that's got some fungi growing off of it. Like, I think actually what happens in some, some of these situations is like ants get inside the tree and the tree just starts growing this huge knob on the side of it and it will look unnatural and weird and people will be drawn to that. Now the reason why you're not going to want to do that in a painting is because most people won't have any idea why you did that. It doesn't really add anything unless of course there's a meaning to it. Uh, it doesn't add anything as far as artistic goes and most people are going to be like that's not real and that person doesn't know what they're doing. So following this rule is going to be important and it's going to be something that you are going to save so much more, so much time just making your trees look geometrically and symmetrically correct and proportionate, um, it's just going to cut all that away and you're going to be able to focus on detail. Alright, so now that we know what a terrible looking tree looks like and how to avoid making our trees look wonky and unrealistic and just bad, I'm going to draw a tree for you and we're going to analyze some of the parameters and things that we can do with a couple variations of trees. Here we go. So this is the uh, skeleton tree with no leaves, no branches or anything. Let's do one with a little foliage. If you're watching this video um, please come back for another art tip or violin tip if you guys want uh, a specific question answered then please write it in the comments and I will do my best to help you guys out and do a video of it but until then thank you for watching if you want to follow me on any of my social accounts go into the description and all of my social accounts are there also if you want to check out any of my paintings that you might see in any of my videos go to kemptercanvas.com and as always Peace out. Subscribe now.